ವೇದಿಕೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ವಿರಾಜಮಾನರಾದಂತಹ ಪರಮ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶ್ವಪ್ರಿಯ ತೀರ್ಥ ಶ್ರೀಪಾದರ ಚರಣ ಕಮಲಗಳಿಗೆ ಸಾಷ್ಟಾಂಗ ಪ್ರಣಾಮಗಳನ್ನು ಅರ್ಪಿಸುತ್ತಾ ವೇದಿಕೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ವಿರಾಜಮಾನರಾದ ಪರಮ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ಈಶಪ್ರಿಯ ತೀರ್ಥ ಶ್ರೀಪಾದರ ಚರಣ ಕಮಲಗಳಿಗೆ ಸಾಷ್ಟಾಂಗ ಪ್ರಣಾಮಗಳನ್ನು ಅರ್ಪಿಸುತ್ತಾ ಇಂದಿನ ಈ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮಕ್ಕೆ ಅಭಿವಂದನಾ ಭಾಷಣ ಇರುವಂತಹ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿದ್ವಾಂಸರಾದಂತಹ ಕರ್ನಲು ಶ್ರೀನಿವಾಸ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಅವರನ್ನು ಪ್ರವಚನ ಭಾಸ್ಕರ ಡಿ ಎ ಜೋಸೆಫ್ ಅವರನ್ನು ವೇದಿಕೆಗೆ ಆಹ್ವಾನಿಸಬೇಕಾಗಿ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಘವೇಂದ್ರ ರಾವ್ ಮತ್ತು ಜಗದೀಶ್ ಶೆಟ್ ಇವರಲ್ಲಿ ವಿನಂತಿಸಿಕೊಳ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೇನೆ ಮಧ್ವಾಚಾರ್ಯರ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾ ಶಿಷ್ಯರಾದ ಶ್ರೀ ನರಹರಿ ತೀರ್ಥ ಶ್ರೀಪಾದರ ಶುಭ ಪರಂಪರೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಭುದೇಶ ತೀರ್ಥ ಶ್ರೀಪಾದರ ಕರಕಮಲ ಸಂಜಾತ ಅದಮಾರು ಮಠದ ಮೂವತ್ತೆರಡನೇ ಯತಿಶ್ರೇಷ್ಠರಾಗಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಸುನಿಶ್ಚಿತಾರ್ಥ ಸನ್ಯಾಸ ಯೋಗ ಯತಯಶುದ್ಧ ಸತ್ವಾಹ ಎಂಬ ಉಪನಿಷತ್ ವಚನಕ್ಕೆ ಅನ್ವರ್ಥಕರಾಗಿ ಐವತ್ತು ಸಂವತ್ಸರಗಳ ಸುದೀರ್ಘ ಕಾಲ ಸನ್ಯಾಸಾಶ್ರಮದಲ್ಲಿ ವೇದಾಂತಾದಿ ಸಕಲ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಪ್ರವಚನ ನಿಷ್ಣಾತರಾಗಿ ಜನರ ಜ್ಞಾನ ತೃಷೆಯನ್ನು ನೀಗಿಸಿರುವವರು ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಸಂಪನ್ನರು ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರಿಯರು ವಾಗ್ಮಿಗಳು ಕೊಡುಗೈ ದಾನಿಗಳು ತ್ಯಾಗಿಗಳು ವಿದ್ಯಾರ್ಥಿ ಪ್ರಿಯರೂ ಆಗಿ ವಿಶ್ವಕ್ಕೆ ಪ್ರಿಯರಾಗಿರುವವರು ಪರಮ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶ್ವಪ್ರಿಯ ತೀರ್ಥ ಶ್ರೀಪಾದರು ಗುರುಗಳ ಅನುಗ್ರಹವನ್ನು ಪಡೆಯುವ ಸಲುವಾಗಿ ಪರಮ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶ್ವಪ್ರಿಯ ತೀರ್ಥ ಶ್ರೀಪಾದರ ಸನ್ಯಾಸ ದೀಕ್ಷಾ ಸುವರ್ಣ ಮಹೋತ್ಸವದ ಗುರು ವಂದನಾ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮವನ್ನು ಪರಮ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ಈಶಪ್ರಿಯ ತೀರ್ಥ ಶ್ರೀಪಾದರ ನೇತೃತ್ವದಲ್ಲಿ ಇಂದು ಹಮ್ಮಿಕೊಳ್ಳಲಾಗಿದೆ ಇದೀಗ ಕರ್ಮಾದೌ ಕರ್ಮ ಮಧ್ಯೆ ತದುಪರಿಚ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರೇರಕ ಸಂಸ್ಮರಂತ ಎಂಬಂತೆ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮದ ನಿರ್ವಿಘ್ನ ಪರಿಸಮಾಪ್ತಿಗಾಗಿ ಭಗವಂತನನ್ನು ಪ್ರಾರ್ಥಿಸುವುದು ನಮ್ಮ ಸನಾತನ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತಿ ಅಂತೆಯೇ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣನನ್ನು ಸ್ತುತಿಸಲಿರುವವರು ಬೆಂಗಳೂರಿನ ಸಂಗೀತ ವಿದ್ವಾಂಸರಾದ ಶ್ರೀ ಪ್ರಾದೇಶ ಆಚಾರ್ಯ ಇವರು ಇದರ ಕನ್ನಡ ಅನುವಾದ ಶ್ರೀ ಬನಂಜೆ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಆಚಾರ್ಯರ ರಚನೆ ಭಕ್ತಿಯಿಂದ ಭಗವಂತನನ್ನು ನೆನೆದಿದನು ಕಾಡುವವನು ಹರಿಯರ ಮೇಯ ಕೃಪೆಯಿಂದ ಹೊಂದುವನು ತಂದ ಬಯಕೆಗಳನು ಹರಿಯರ ಮೇಯ ಕೃಪೆಯಿಂದ ಹೊಂದುವನು ತನ್ನ ಬಯಕೆಗಳನು ಯಾವರ ಮೇಯ ಕಡೆಗಂಡ ನೋಟಕಿ ಎಲ್ಲ ನಡೆಯುತ್ತಿಗುದೋ ಅಂಥವಳನ್ನು ತನ್ನ ಮೆಲು ನೋಟದಿಂದ ಕಾಪಿಡುವ ಕರಿಗೆ ನಮನಂ ಕಾಪಿಡುವ ಕರಿಗೆ ನಮನ ಕಾಪಿಡುವ ಕರಿಗೆ ನಮನ ಶ್ರಾವ್ಯವಾಗಿ ಭಗವಂತನನ್ನು ಸ್ತುತಿಸಿರುವಂತಹ ಶ್ರೀ ಪ್ರಾದೇಶ್ ಆಚಾರ್ಯವರಿಗೆ ಧನ್ಯವಾದಗಳು ಇದೀಗ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪ್ರಿಯ ವಿಶ್ವಪ್ರಿಯ ಎಂಬಂತಹ ಪುಸ್ತಕವನ್ನು ಪರಮ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶ್ವಪ್ರಿಯ ತೀರ್ಥ ಶ್ರೀಪಾದರು ಅನಾವರಣೆಗೊಳಿಸಬೇಕಾಗಿ ಪ್ರಾರ್ಥಿಸಿಕೊಳ್ತೇನೆ ಈ ಪುಸ್ತಕದ ಸಂಪಾದಕರು ವಿಶ್ವೇಶದಾಸ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಓಂ ಪ್ರಕಾಶ್ ಭಟ್ರು ಮತ್ತು ವಿದ್ವಾಂಸರಾದಂತಹ ಸಗ್ರಿ ರಾಘವೇಂದ್ರ ಉಪಾಧ್ಯಾಯರು ಹಾಗೂ ಸಂಗಮೇಶ್ವರ ಪೇಟೆಯ ಶ್ರೀ ದೇವಿದಾಸ್ ಇವರು ಇವರೆಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ಕೂಡ ಅಭಿನಂದನೆಗಳು ಹಾಗೆಯೇ ಎರಡು ಸಾವಿರದ ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತು ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತೆರಡು ಶ್ರೀ ಅದಮಾರು ಮಟ್ಟು ಪರ್ಯಾಯದ ಸ್ಮರಣ ಸಂಚಿಕೆ ವಿಶ್ವಪ್ರಿಯ ಮತ್ತು ಈಶಪ್ರಿಯ ಎಂಬ ಪುಸ್ತಕವನ್ನು ಕೂಡ ಅನಾವರಣಗೊಳಿಸಬೇಕು ಎಂಬುದಾಗಿ ಪರಮ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶ್ವಪ್ರಿಯ ತೀರ್ಥ ಶ್ರೀಪಾದರಲ್ಲಿ ಹಾಗೂ ಪರಮ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ಈಶಪ್ರಿಯ ತೀರ್ಥ ಶ್ರೀಪಾದರಲ್ಲಿ ಸಭಕ್ತಿಕ ಸಾಷ್ಟಾಂಗ ಪ್ರಣಾಮಗಳೊಂದಿಗೆ ಪ್ರಾರ್ಥಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೇನೆ ಪರಮ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀಪಾದರಿಗೆ ಸಾಷ್ಟಾಂಗ ಪ್ರಣಾಮ ಪೂರ್ವಕ ಕೃತಜ್ಞತೆಗಳು ಇದೀಗ ಸಂಪಾದಕರಾದಂತಹ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶ್ವೇಶದಾಸ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಓಂ ಪ್ರಕಾಶ್ ಭಟ್ರು ಇವರು ಪರಮ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀಪಾದರಿಗೆ ಗೌರವ
That's it, though. Hold oh, down. ಪರ್ಯ ಪರಮ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ಈಶಪ್ರಿಯ ತೀರ್ಥ ಶ್ರೀಪಾದರಿಗೆ ಗೌರವ ಸಮರ್ಪಣೆ ಮಾಡಲಿಕ್ಕಿರುವವರು ಓಂ ಪ್ರಕಾಶ್ ಭಟ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಓಂ ಪ್ರಕಾಶ್ ಭಟ್ರಿಗೆ ಅಭಿನಂದನೆಗಳು ಇದೀಗ ನಿನ್ನೆ ಅತ್ಯುತ್ತಮವಾಗಿ ಉಪನ್ಯಾಸವನ್ನು ನೀಡಿ ಎಲ್ಲರ ಮನಸ್ಸಿಗೆ ಮುದವನ್ನು ನೀಡಿರತಕ್ಕಂಥವರು ಪ್ರವಚನ ಭಾಸ್ಕರ ಡಿ ಎ ಜೋಸೆಫ್ ಅವರು ಇದೀಗ ಅವರು ತಮ್ಮ ಅನಿಸಿಕೆಗಳನ್ನು ಅಭಿಪ್ರಾಯಗಳನ್ನು ಒಂದೆರಡು ನುಡಿಗಳ ಮೂಲಕ ಅಭಿವ್ಯಕ್ತಪಡಿಸಲಿಕ್ಕಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಐ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಪ್ರವಚನ ಭಾಸ್ಕರ ಡಿ ಎ ಜೋಸೆಫ್ ಎ ಸ್ಕಾಲರ್ ಆಫ್ ರೆಪ್ಯೂಟ್ ಟು ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಫ್ಯೂ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಶ್ರೀ ವೆಂಕಟೇಶ ಚರಣ ಶರಣ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ ಪರಮಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಗ ಅಸ್ಮದ್ ಸರ್ವಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಮೈ ಹಂಬಲ್ ಒಬೀಸಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಟು ದಿ ಸೀನಿಯರ್ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ಜೂನಿಯರ್ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ಅಟ್ ದಿ ಔಟ್ ಸೈಟ್ ಮೈ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಟು ದಿ ವೇದ ವಿದ್ವಾನ್ ಸ್ವಾಮೀಜಿ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸೀಟೆಡ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೇಜ್ ಐ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಹಂಬಲಿ ದ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಹೂ ಸ್ಪೋಕ್ ಆನ್ ಬಿಹಾಫ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೇ ಪ್ರೇಸಿಂಗ್ ಮೇ Swamiji ordered me today to speak out one or two experiences of my spiritual journey in the early days of my life. There are too many to narrate now, but when I recollect my past days, when I was a student of 10th standard in St. Mary's High School, Madurai, my tamil teacher was one sri r veera raghava ayengar he came to be accepted by me as my master in my later days while i was left alone with him one day i tempted i was tempted to ask him a few mischievous questions first of all i asked him sir why is it you have a tuft on your head we have a beautiful crop we don't have it why do you look so ugly he smiled at me and the temperamental compatibility he showed then drew me towards him the speciality about him is he will never get angry even if you ask very perplexing questions he stared into my eyes there was a small smile in over his lips i could not understand then what he was having in his mind while looking at me but later he told me the other day i was looking at you staring at you with a smile i was talking to myself i have been looking for a man like this fellow for a very long time he liked my mischievous question he started explaining things one by one after he finished his explanation about the tuft he had upon his head i i shot up another question sir you say that a man is born again and again previous karma future karma prarabdha karma sanjita karma all these things you are speaking of i have a question when a man steals somebody else's property the policeman arrests him dra- drags him to the police station gives him a nice beating and frightens him with a warning not to steal any more because of the beating he received he takes a resolution not to steal any more this i understand basically I, anybody can understand now you say in hinduism i am punished by god for a certain sin which i did in the previous birth i do not know what it is 
I do not know what sin I committed in the previous birth. But God is there to punish me severely. I keep suffering by some disease or by some debts or uh, by some worries or some calamities. This is a stupid system of punishment. When the policeman beats a culprit, the culprit understands why he is beaten. So he takes a resolution not to steal any more. So that is a useful way of punishing a man. Without telling a man what he did as a crime in the previous birth, what is the point in punishing him? What will he understand? You say that I must correct myself. When I do not know what for I am punished, how can I correct myself? There your karma theory is wrong, I said. And uh, you know the answer he gave me. He said, My dear son, there is a difference between the policeman punishing and God punishing you. The policeman's duty is to keep the society peacefully, free of crimes. So he tells him, this is the crime you committed, I beat you for this, don't repeat it. There ends the matter. But God punishing you is not for the crime you did. Then he stopped for some seconds. Then what else for? He takes a fancy for punishing me. Why should he punish me? He said, the punishment is not for the crime you committed, but the basic Triguna Samskara which you have in your soul, which induces you to commit sins. By punishments, a soul gets purified. That Triguna Dosha is reduced gradually. When birth after birth he is punished like that, at one stage, all the dirt is washed off, he becomes a clean soul. So to punish a man, God need not tell him what for he is being punished. It is not at all necessary. I said, uh, I understand 50% of this. The remaining 50% is still a suspense. Then he said, you are moving with young men and uh, old men. What is the difference you find between a young man and an old man? As a young man is active, very jubilant, very anxious in uh, pouring out words. But an old man is always very patient. He acts very patiently. He doesn't lose temper easily. Uh, he is uh, more civilized. How did that civilization come to him? Because of the experiences he underwent in life. When he was a young man of 20, he was also jubilant, he was also uh, out for doing crimes. But life has taught him several lessons. When he becomes a man of 70 or 80, he becomes mature. His mind gets mellow. He gives up several things and becomes a man who deserves some respect. The same way, when the soul goes through this karmic cycle, because of the punishments and because of the cleansing experiences he is given during his experience of life, his soul gets mellow. Two people go along a path which is not very much lighted. There is darkness still. One man feels tempted to take the money purse of the man who is going in front. The other man does not think about it. But the police is not there. Why is it so? A man who gets criminal urge is not yet seasoned. The man who hesitates to do crimes even in solitude where, where there is no law, he is mature because of previous experiences. So a man of 20 and his friend who is a man of 25, they might be similar in age but in maturity of soul they will differ. It is due to this experience of the past karma. 
i would say that the most intelligent punisher is god not a policeman then i came home i thought about it again and again then i found that there is some sense in it some reason in it i gradually felt a drawn towards this rebirth theory the next day i approached him i asked him you please give me some more points which would strengthen my faith in karma theory then he came out you compare your own friends one boy is intelligent one boy is dull headed one man one boy is rich one boy is poor one man is handsome one man is not why this much of difference you find in creation if the creator is a kind father if he is a parent of neutrality he should not allow this much of disparity in the created beings now what does your religion say regarding this he asked me back what does your religion say regarding this i said my religion does not say anything about it if i go to question my preacher why is this this disparity of creation they say shut up your mouth keep quiet believe just to believe that's all yours is not a question he must believe blindly that is how i have been taught then my tamil master said well Hinduism has a rational explanation for everything every social setup is justifiable from the hindu point of view nobody can blame god for any of his difficulty if he, if he reads the shastras thoroughly he will find every act is just that way he entered into my heart and brain by his uh, rational approach to practical life then i started uh, getting interested in vaishnavism then i asked him another question you see your narayana is uh, lying down on a snake my question is the very basic concept to say that god is taking rest is silly god must not take rest he must be brisk Why should you be always lying down on a snake? If at all you are going to justify that, my next question is, does not God uh, have a good bed like Dunlap Hill or uh, some civilized uh, thing? Why should you lie on a snake like this? So it's all ridiculous. Then he came out with an answer. In other religions they say God is very brisk, busy. and they go to the extent of saying that god needs rest once in a week they say sunday is the resting day they say their god was very working hard for 6 days on the seventh day he needs rest whereas in hinduism we say that god does not need rest he does everything with uh, no difficulty lord krishna says in bhagavad gita arjuna look at my viswarupa all this effulgence i hold with just one finger there is so much of unused energy in me it's all lying lazy because god need not exert any effort to to do anything to create or to maintain or to destroy all those things he can do with just a thinking of a second he can do it sankalpa matra a mere mental intention to create or to destroy is enough for him so to show that god is above hard work and tiresomeness he is portrayed as taking rest not only that you can see him almost sleeping half his eyes are closed that shows he does everything almost in a retiring mood he needs no energy then this is snake you have read in yoga shastra every man's spiritual energy is stored as kundalini 
in the 33rd bone of his backbone and every soul's kundalini power is in the control of the lord to show that god rests on a thousand headed serpent the serpent power of every human being is in his control and that shows that then i asked him how about the chakra in his hand the uh, conch in this hand and those servants in paradise sri vaikuntha now this concept is not very convincing god is acting like a boss paying box boss employer these people working for him what is the difference between a government servant and uh, the servant in vaikuntha does he need that service and in films i see goddess lakshmi pressing his feet what does that show does he have a pain in his feet does he need a woman to do this service what is your explanation for that then he said it's true that people say god has no form he is formless he is above forms now even soul is formless the release the soul is formless god is also formless but when the devotees who have become muktas by his grace when they want to offer some service to him in what way will they be able to do it don't you feel that they need a body to do that if god has no body at all and if they don't have any body at all how will these devotees show their gratitude and uh, service the only possibility is they must uh, imbibe a body god must have a body so as a token of they respect and the gratitude they are doing it not that god is feeling a pain in the feet that god is lakshmi is pressing his feet it is not that way the kainkarya is done out of kritignita gratitude thus he gradually drew my attention to vaishnavism and i started reading uh, sanskrit books by his instructions and within one year or two i realized that uh, he is the master meant for me and i accepted him as my gnanasri as a guru he taught me for uh, several years say almost three decades he taught me sanskrit all the hindu shastra shat darshanas jainism buddhism tamil literature everything and he was a man of extraordinary iq memory power and original logical capacities i miss him very much now and yesterday one friend came to me and uh, he appreciated me that uh, uh, you were able to answer any question instantly extemporary how is that i said you are wrong your observation is wrong whatever answer i give is that i picked up from my master nothing is original i learned everything from him down the ages so it's all in here i have become a living computer i have registered everything here so you shoot any question that reserved answer will come because i have been questioning him like this for 30 years i have been pestering him with questions and the only thing one thing very interesting thing is that uh, appeal to him very much he said i like what i like in you is your questioning quality you keep on questioning me i like you because of that only you are a different man i find my student in you so he taught me hinduism and uh, when i felt that i am almost qualified to answer any question in hinduism god took him away from me now he is in sri vaikuntha but i feel quite competent to face any situation practical or spiritual when i open any book to read i somehow i feel that i have read the book already i know what is going to be in the next page it was all the greatness of my master he made me qualified so our uh, secretary said just talk for uh, 10 minutes swami ji said you can go ahead for 20 minutes now 20 minutes are gone i think before a chit comes to me please stop huh? i think i will stop now and uh, thanking you for your patient audience 
I have so many days and all the people who have been helping me for the last two days, I take leave. Uh, I think they want me to uh, speak tomorrow also in some college or school. Uh, hoping that God will make another opportunity to meet mutually, I take leave. Jai Sri Manarayan. I thank <coughs> Pravachana Bhaskara, D.A. Joseph sir, for expressing his experience as follower of Sanatana Hindu Dharma. Pravachana Bhaskara, Sri D.A. Joseph sir, Sri Padarila, Anandra Mandra Sri ಇದೀಗ ಪ್ರಧಾನ ಘಟ್ಟ ಪರಮ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಶ್ ಶ್ರೀಪಾದರಿಗೆ ಅಭಿವಂದನಾ ಗುರುವಂದನಾ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮ ತ್ಯಾಗೇ ನೈಕವೇನ ತ್ಯಾಗೇ ನೈಕೆ ಅಮೃತತ್ವ ಮಾನಸುಹು ಎಂಬ ಉಪನಿಷದ್ ವಾಕ್ಯದಂತೆ ತ್ಯಾಗಿಗಳು ಅಧ್ಯಯನ ಅಧ್ಯಾಪನ ನಿರತರು ಶಕಲ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರ ಪ್ರವೀಣರೂ ಆಗಿರುವಂತಹ ಪರಮ ಗುರುಗಳಾದಂತಹ ಪರಮ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶ್ವಪ್ರಿಯ ತೀರ್ಥ ಶ್ರೀಪಾದರಿಗೆ ಗುರುವಂದನೆ ಸಲ್ಲಿಸಬೇಕೆಂದು ಅವರ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಶಿಷ್ಯರಾದ ಪರಮ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ಈಶಪ್ರಿಯ ತೀರ್ಥ ಶ್ರೀಪಾದರಲ್ಲಿ ಸಭಕ್ತಿಕ ಸಾಷ್ಟಾಂಗ ಪ್ರಣಾಮ ಪೂರ್ವಕವಾಗಿ ಪ್ರಾರ್ಥಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದ